Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 61 for Wednesday, September 2nd, 2015. Automation apps. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Prosper. Prosper is a peer-to-peer -peer lending marketplace which connects people who are looking to borrow money with those who have money to lend. Visit prosper.com slash twit and receive a $50 Visa gift card when you get a loan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. So back in the day when I was rocking and rolling with my trusty Motorola Droid, if you remember that one, uh, I was always on the hunt for ways to push it as far as I could, from flashing new ROMs to root-level apps to a category of apps that I'm going to show off today. Automation apps may take a little bit of time to really grasp and understand, but the power they can yield is pretty extraordinary. It can quite literally be like you're creating your own app within an app to do that one super specific thing you've always wanted your device to do. And these apps allow you to create many of these tasks and run them simultaneously so you can see how they can very quickly become invaluable tools in your belt. Automation apps offer a full menu of options that can be overwhelming at first. I'm not going to lie about that. So definitely take what you see here as a starting point. And if you're curious, you can look into them further. Make sure you give yourself some good quiet time with the app to fully understand how they work and what they're capable of. So let's pit three of the top automation apps against each other in this week's Best of the Best. One great way to automate tasks is by using NFC or near filled communication. If your phone supports it, it enables you to program NFC tags that can be placed wherever you like. The purpose here is that by tapping your phone on that tag, your phone will automatically perform whatever action you've assigned to that tag. That is where Trigger, formerly known as NFC Task Launcher, was born. It began as an app that was specifically tailored to help manage NFC tasks on your device, but it's broadened now and become more of a fully functional automation app. However, its core users still swear by its impressive NFC capabilities. The developer of Trigger also developed another app uh, that's a favorite of mine, Agent, and users of that app will instantly notice similarities in both function and design with this one. Think of it as a fully customizable version of Agent. I'll tap the floating action button here to add the task and then this one to set the trigger. Trigger does a great job of simplifying this whole experience. It's one of its strongest qualities. Some triggers that can kick off a task include connecting to a particular Wi-Fi access point, uh, connecting to a Bluetooth device, maybe a specific time of day or a calendar event, when headphones are plugged into the device, when the battery reaches a certain point, there's tons of them. And of course, this one, when an NFC tag is tapped with your phone. You can add a restriction, which is a way to ensure the task only kicks into gear when a group of requirements are met. In this case, I want this task to run when I set my phone on an NFC tag at my bedside and only after 11 p.m. at night and before 6 a.m. in the morning. And finally, only when it's plugged into power. Next, I'm going to define the actions. What happens if all these conditions are met? And here, you can see the impressive range of actions to pick from. I could silence the phone or send a text message to my Twitter account saying, good night. Or I could disable the display timeout so the screen stays on all night long while it's plugged in. Or any combination of these. And as you can see, there's far too many for me to just rattle off here, so I'll leave it up to you to look. I can make my NFC tag toggle between two separate tasks. Think of this as kind of like a light switch with two separate states. And when I'm done, I place the device on top of the NFC tag to write to it so it's recognized by my device the next time I interact with it. Some plugins will offer a bit deeper integration with things like phone calls and SMS messages, among other things. And it's all synced 
to your Google account in the cloud. Now, Trigger simplifies what can be a very complex and complicated setup rather effectively, I think. You can find it for free in the Play Store with a premium upgrade for $3.24 inside the app. Now, by far, the app that appears to have created the category on Android is an app called Tasker. It's the one I started out with many moons ago. Tasker's always been seen as one of the most fully featured apps in the automation category, while still being incredibly complicated to program. Even after a few user interface redesigns, the app just kind of feels convoluted and oftentimes completely unintuitive in its approach to programming complex scenarios. And you might decide not to use it if it weren't so damn powerful. So let's uh, set out to create a profile that will turn on the speakerphone when you set the device face down on a table during a call. So first, I'm going to create a task, and I'm going to call that speakerphone. I then create an action category. Essentially, this means what do I want it to do? Find audio from the menu, and then find speakerphone in that list. If that menu of options was scary to look at, then Tasker is definitely not for you. But moving onward, make sure to toggle set to on, what we've done basically is we've told Tasker that this task will activate speakerphone when called upon to do so. Now, we'll go back up here, which is kind of confusing, but after fumbling around, you'll get there eventually and we'll go back. And now to the profiles section. Profiles are the conditions that are met in order to fire off that task we just created. I'll go ahead and create the first context here by setting state, as in system state, and then selecting sensor. And then we'll select orientation. I'll set that orientation setting to face down, meaning if the phone is facing down, this context is met. And then I'll select the task that I just made called speakerphone. Now, in order to ensure that this doesn't run at any time and only happens during a call, which is what we want, I'll create a second context within that profile. And this basically detects if a call is currently happening. I'll tap back out. A few jumbled block of action should perform what I want here. And OK. If I sound a bit haggard, it's because I don't actually enjoy using Tasker, though I completely love how geeky you can get while using it if you have the time to invest. And people swear by Tasker because of that power. But the learning curve here is steep with this one, primarily because the UI is so confusing and kind of broken in my opinion. Thankfully, plenty of people way smarter and more patient than me have posted their Tasker creations for the world to install on their own devices at places like tasker.wikidot.com. Com. Look, people are using Tasker to literally automate their house. That's the power of this app. Not to mention, plenty of developers have spent their time developing plugins for Tasker that extend its capabilities even further. Find Tasker for $2.99 in the Play Store now and give yourself an afternoon before you judge. Here's an automation app on the other side of the spectrum. It actually started on iOS before coming to Android, and then it's not as feature-rich or complex as apps like Tasker, but it's still capable of some cool interactions with the internet and beyond. If by IFTTT touts a simplified and colorful user interface, along with a very straightforward method for picking conditions and actions. Here, they're referred to as recipes. Now, as you can see, I have a recipe where the if is tied to a simple Craigslist search. In this case, I was looking for a used trampoline in my area and wanted to be the first to jump on a good deal. When that condition was met, I had the then set to ping push bullet with an instant notification on my phone so I get it right away. And then let me tell you, this worked better than any Craigslist app I've used to date. But let's see what else we can do with if. We'll tap the plus to get started, and right away we see some collections, which are kind of good for fishing for ideas. Recipes inside those collections are named in ways that make it easy to understand exactly what they're used for. Everything is simplified and totally glanceable. And here, the emphasis is placed more on automation of sites and services, such as this recipe that detects a new profile picture on my Facebook page and automatically updates my Twitter profile with that same picture. Or this one that sets your device's wallpaper to the latest image you've uploaded to Instagram.
If also has the ability to do things on your device, like turning off your Wi-Fi when you leave a certain location. Now, aside from collections, there's a list of recommended recipes, as well as those that rank as the highest used recipes of all time, like this one, that'll notify you if there's rain in the forecast for tomorrow. If you want to roll your own, just hit the floating action button to create a recipe, then tap the plus next to if and search for or select any number of triggers that you want. How about I'll add an Android screenshot trigger? I often take screenshots for my shows, but then I have to manually remember to send them to my editor. Here, I'll tell if to recognize when I've taken a screenshot on my device and then upload that file to my Google Drive folder. I'll be notified a little bit later when that upload occurs so I know that it happened. Neato, saves me a step. If by If TTT can be found for free in the Play Store. All right, so this is kind of a tough category to pick a winner of this week. I'm kind of torn. If we're talking about automation apps that I actually use on a daily basis, it would likely be, be between If and Trigger, and ultimately I'd have to side with If. It's what I use right now, only because the minimal things I think up to do with these apps is made so much easier by either of these two options thanks to the thoughtful design. The developers actually understand that this is a complicated category and they've taken steps to ease the user's pain and I really think that goes a long way. But at the core of Android is always the desire to push a device's capabilities to its limits. And that award definitely goes to Tasker, hands down. It has the best support from users and developers who've taken the time to squeeze out as much as possible uh, with your device. And we're even talking root level stuff here, not to mention Tasker has a section I didn't cover, partially because I simply don't enjoy its interface that allows you to create front ends for your tasks so you can you know, have a button that you press on your home screen to fire off your complex creation. That's cool, but again, UI is such a beast, and I'm not even joking. So awarding a winner, I think Tasker still reigns supreme for the category, even when you consider how bad the design is by modern standards. It's simply the best at giving maximum control over your device, and that's saying a lot considering how bad the UI is. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Prosper. Let's face facts. There aren't many good ways to borrow money when you need it. Friends, there's family, credit card companies, traditional bank loans, all those. But now with a low fixed rate loan with Prosper.com, there's an even better way. You can borrow up to $35,000 in as few as five days. And you can use that money for just about anything you want. Pay off high rate credit cards, fix up the house, uh, put it into your business. I know at our house, we're always working on the house and those projects are super expensive. It adds up quick. We can do so much with a loan uh, from Prosper. Prosper's online marketplace connects people who need money with those who want to invest and they're investing in you. So you don't rack up more debt on your credit cards. You, you can pay them off with Prosper. If you want to check out your low rate instantly without affecting your good credit, just go to prosper.com slash twit. And now, and for a limited time, Prosper is offering Twit viewers a $50 Visa gift card with your low interest loan. So check it out. You can get up to $35,000 in your account in as few as five days and a $50 Visa gift card. Go to prosper.com slash twit for this special offer, offer just for Twit viewers. And we thank Prosper for their continued support. All right. By this point, you probably already know I'm a sucker for old school video game throwbacks. So this week's Big App is no different. Let's take a look. I've played a lot of Pac-Man in my day. I'm old enough to remember going into an arcade, an actual arcade, and dropping quarters into the machine when Pac-Man Fever was still a hot track on the radio. And if you've never heard that song, don't worry, you aren't missing much. But I do have a soft spot in my heart for those classic video games, and Pac-Man was near the top of the list, so I'm thrilled to see the latest game of the franchise and equally surprised to see who created it. The developer of one of my favorites from last year, Crossy Road, is back with a new take on the franchise called Pac-Man 256. You'll get a lot of the usual sound effects that the franchise is known for and one giant, never-ending Pac-Man maze, complete with pack dots to chomp, fruit to gobble, and ghosts of all colors to dodge and hopefully outsmart. The challenge in this game is simply going for as long as you can without touching a ghost. There is no end to the level, and you'll never clear a board. As you make your way upward, the maze slowly disappears below the screen, and if you take too much time, you'll begin to see the glitch. 
That's the artifact that once illustrated a sickly video game that probably had an out-of-order sign hanging on top of the game cabinet, but here it's a sign of impending doom within the game. You outrun the glitch, or you meet your maker, basically. What made Crossy Road so much fun was its quick gameplay, and beyond that, its addictive replay value. And thankfully, the developer has brought that energy to Pac-Man 256, meaning you will have a hard time turning off the game when you meet your game overlord. You can use up to six continues per day if you want to power through and drive up your score, but unlimited free play that starts you over at the beginning is always an option. And the longer you can keep chomping pack dots without hitting an empty space, the higher your pack dot chain. And that's a record you'll constantly be trying to break. Now, finally, you can earn gifts as you play, similar to Crossy Road, as well as score power-ups that allow you to do things like shoot lasers at ghosts. And again, those power-ups are only used when you use a credit. This is one of my favorite Pac-Man reboots here. Find Pac-Man 256 for free in the Play Store. Not sure I ever expected to see a Pac-Man sequel that I enjoy playing as much as this one. Uh, definitely check it out. All right, uh, send me your favorite apps or games. Hey, I love getting games because games are fun. Uh, you can send them to me at arena at twit.tv and I will surely play them for you. Or you can post those to the subreddit at androidapparena.reddit.com. There you're sharing them not only with me, but also the rest of the world. So it's handy for everyone. The show records live every Wednesday around 4.30 p.m. Pacific following tech news tonight. That's at twit.tv slash live. And if you can't make the live taping, don't worry. The show will appear later that evening and in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell. I'll see you next week in the arena.